Okay, today we are doing 8-6 part B, um, and this is to find the volume of cones. So the last lesson we did was finding the volume of pyramids, where we did the one-third of what we would do to find the volume of a prism. So just to give you a hint, we're going to be doing one-third of what we would have done to find the volume of a cylinder to get the volume of a cone. So hopefully this won't seem too difficult because it's just kind of adding one extra step to something we've already done. So today's objective for today and tomorrow for you to practice and hopefully um, master is for you to be able to find the volume of cones. So real quick, a cone has a base that is in the shape of a circle and it, then it has a height that comes to one point of vertex at the very top. So the volume is going to be one-third of the area of the circular base. So we're going to have this base, we're going to find our area, but then we're going to have that divided by three. That is so hard to see and so ugly. Um, and then we're going to times all of that by the height of this cone. So the formula looks like that. Or I, I would maybe write it like this for you guys to make life easier. Do your pi r squared h just like a prism, but divide by 3 in the end. Um, and it's a little tricky because of the way we're using pi. You always want to calculate pi absolutely last because that's the part where we round. So we'll kind of navigate that today so you can see how that's done. So let's do an example together. We're going to find the volume of this pyramid. We're going to use the pi button on the calculator when we do our, our uh, calculations. So the first thing that we need to do, let's go ahead and write down our, um, our formula. So we've got pi r squared h divide by 3. So our radius is 3 and our height is 10. They've given those to us. So let's go ahead and put our numbers in. So pi radius was 3. So we're going to square that and then our height was also 10 and then our formula has it divided by 3. So let's start our simplification process. 3 times 3 is going to be 9 so I'm going to substitute 9 here, and then this is still times 10. Um, so now up top I've got 9 times 10, which is going to simplify to 90. And then before I do pi, I can actually simplify 90 divided by 3, which is 30. So I'm going to go ahead and write 30 here. So I've simplified all of that down to 30, but we still have to multiply by pi. So I'm going to put it into the calculator. I'm going to do 30 times my pi button, which is going to give me a total of a big, hairy, ugly decimal, which looks like this, 94.247, da 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 forever and ever and ever. But I want to round to the nearest tenth always. So here's my tenths place. It could stay the same or it could go up depending on the number right next door. This is a 4, so it's not going to go up. It's going to stay 94.2. And we were measuring in inches. And volume is always cubed. And that is how we find the volume of that cone. So let's try another one just like that. We're going to start with our formula. Volume equals pi r squared h all that divided by 3. So over on our picture they've given us the radius is 3 and they've given us a height of 7. So let's do some substitution. Pi times 3 squared times 7 for the height and then all of that divided by 3. So the first place that we can do a simplification is right here on our 3 squared. 3 times 3 is equal to 9 and then we can simplify 9 times 7, which is equal to 63. And then before we move on to our pi, we want to simplify 63 divided by 3, which is actually only 21. So 
we need to do 21 pi in our calculator. So we're going to do 21 times the pi button, which gives us 65.973. Da -da 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 -da. So we're going to round from here. So this is the one that could change based on this number. So 7 is bigger than 5. So I need to round up. But if I round 9 up to 10, I actually have to add 1 to 5. So I'm going to go up to 66.0. And then we are measuring this time in meters. And volume is always how many? Cubed, 3 to the third power. So we're 66 cubic meters, 66.0. Okay, something we've been working on is changing dimensions, and some of you get confused by it. Really, all that I want you to take away is to look what happens when we change certain dimensions on with, throughout the formula. So our first original dimension, we've got this cone that has a radius of 3 and a height of 4. If we just do the straightforward math, we're going to get, um, without doing the decimal multiplication, 12 pi. If we triple the height, I want you to notice that height is just 1, like to the power of 1. If we triple the height, we should get triple the volume because height is just to the first power. But let's see if that happens. So I've done the math here, and you should notice that when we triple the height, we actually triple 12 times 3, the volume. The next dimension we're going to change is changing the radius. So the radius, I want you to notice, is a squared term. So we're going to triple the radius, and we want to see what happens to our volume. I promise it's going to be interesting. So on this one, you can see that when we tripled our radius, because radius is squared, it actually did more than triple our volume. It actually made our volume times 9. Um, and the reason behind that is because 3 squared is 9. So that is the pattern that I want you guys to kind of be picking up on as we have been doing these changing dimensions, if that's all you pull from it. So here at the bottom is a description of what happens when we change the dimensions. When we change the height, when, we trip, when the height of the cone is tripled, the volume is tripled. But when, we, when the radius is tripled, the volume of the cone is nine times the original volume. Um, and the reason behind that is because of this little squared right here. Makes that little tube makes a huge difference. Okay, now for another we do problem. We've got we're gonna find the volume of a cone to the nearest tenth of a cubic centimeter if the radius of the base is 15 centimeters and the height is 64 centimeters. So I'm going to try it and do this one with you guys without drawing a picture because you don't need a picture to do this. If we have our formula, volume of a cone equals pi r squared times height divided by 3. We can simply use the info they've given us and do some substitution. So our radius is 15. So I'm going to put it where I had r squared and I'm going to do 15 squared. And then they give us a height of 64. So I'm going to take away this height and I'm going to substitute in times 64 for my height. So now we can start simplifying and just reducing this down to basically what it's equal to. So we're going to start with our 15 squared. 15 times 15 is equal to 225. And now we're going to simplify down the 225 times 64 right here. And that is equal to 14,400. And now this is the tricky part because a lot of people would want to do pi first. But we're going to actually divide this number by 3 before we do our pi. And when we simplify that, we just get 4,800. Oops, I put that. There we go. 4,800 pi. So now we can put it into our calculator. So we're going to use our pi button, so times the pi button and then equals. We get a total of 
six four four and it keeps going but if I want to round to the nearest tenth I need to look at this number right here four four is not five or higher so I'm gonna keep it as fifteen thousand seventy nine point six and then we are doing centimeters and volume is always cubed so that is how we do one without actually having a picture of it. So the next three problems are yours to try all on your own. So this one does not have a picture. If you need to draw a picture or a sketch, you can. Or you could just figure out what the radius is and what the height is and then plug them into your formula. For this one, you do have the picture. You'll just have to figure out what the radius is because they're only giving you in this one diameter which makes this one tricky so take your time on this one ask questions if you don't get it um, but you're gonna wanna only take half of this because they don't give you radius they give you diameter and then on the last one same thing I want you to try this one but notice that they give you seven inches for your diameter but you don't want diameter your your formula requires that you use radius so make sure you're dividing by two when you finish with this, have me check your you do questions so that I can get you your five points. If you have any questions along the way, please be sure to ask. And um, when you're done with this, you are finished for today or you're ready to start your practice, whichever day it depends which day you do this. So good luck, guys. Let me know what you think.